Hi, my name is Adrian Fabris. I'm from the Geological Survey of South Australia. Now, I'd just like to start out by acknowledging that I'm presenting from the traditional lands of the Kaurna people. So in this presentation, I'll just give you a quick summary of some of the geochemical work we've been doing on ICG deposits in South Australia. Okay, to provide some context, I'll be talking about the Olympic Copper Gold province that sits along the eastern margin of South Australia's Gawler Craton. Um, it's most notable for hosting a number of hematite style uh, deposits such as Prominent Hill and Carapatina, and also, of course, um, the giant Olympic Dam deposit, which contains over 17 million tonnes of, of copper, um, and um, it's a very significant uranium deposit, a lot of gold and silver, and actually um, loads of other elements as well. But it's probably the primary example of the ICG deposit. It's important to point out that the Olympic Copper Gold Province hosts many um, additional occurrences. So there are in fact um, over 100 Copper Gold occurrences to varying significance and um, over a range of styles. Uh, geochronology that's been done at both hematite dominated um, ICG occurrences and magnetite um, occurrences have shown that they form uh, in, a, in a similar kind of um, time period associated with magnetism at around um, between 1600 and, and 1570. The, uh, the basis behind um, this um, presentation really is a, a project by the Geological Survey looking at reassaying um, drill core held in, in government storage. So um, we um, reassayed select intervals from um, uh, holes throughout this region, also collected um, spectral mineralogy using the Hologger system and petrophysics, um, but it's the geochemistry that I'll, I'll focus on today. And really trying to answer um, a couple of um, just fundamental or basic questions of what are the minor and, and trace element characteristics of um, ICG style um, mineralization in, in this region, and then also do deposits, the significant deposits, have distinct geochemical characteristics from those um, smaller occurrences. To uh, define um, the geochemical characteristics of this style of deposit, we subset the samples um, into those either intersecting or within 10 kilometres of a known copper gold occurrence, and then subdivided that into those associated with hematite dominated um, occurrences versus magnetite dominated occurrences. And those are, and, and, and the, the samples and, and drill holes are, um, are shown on that map. You now you'll be hearing a lot about um, specific alteration facies in this, in this webinar. Um, so I'd just like to refer back to the Coraview model and say that when I'm referring to hematite um, dominated systems, it's um, including uh, a range of alteration facies um, that sit up around this part of the, the diagram um, of the um, evolution model. And really the magnetite dominated systems that I'm referring to encompass um, a number of different alteration facies in the earlier stages of um, the uh, genesis of this style of deposit. Um, in South Australia, uh, most explorers are interested in the hematite style of deposit because they're far more um, copper endowed. And so, you know, the objective was really to try to um, see what are the characteristics that help you vector from magnetite style deposits towards hematite style deposits that the explorers are in particular looking for. So before getting into the specific geochemical characteristics, I just wanted to point out that using regional geochemical data as we have in this study and insight from the alteration facies model, we can make some broad district scale observations. What I have done here is plot the ratio of potassic to sodic alteration in pie charts for each drill hole. So in pale yellow uh, are samples with broadly similar 
um, K feldspar to albite ratio, which is typical of background rocks. Intervals which have either far more K feldspar than albite in orange and far more albite than K feldspar in brown. So if, for example, a hole was to have a narrow zone of um, albitic alteration that would display as a, as a small wedge um, of, of brown or, or, or um, uh, so, um, sodic alteration um, in the pie chart. So uh, while um, potassic alteration comes in at, at high temperature and, um, and, and is associated with magnetite dominated deposits, um, what we tend to see is that drill holes in magnetite dominated occurrences retain at least some sodic alteration phases. And so this type of plot effectively shows the distribution of where we get hematite dominated style. So in the central part of the um, uh, Olympic Copper Gold province versus um, areas where we get magnetite dominated to those transitional styles. Um, where we see at least some sodic alteration um, uh, uh, intervals in, in, each, in, in the drill holes. So where we have overprinted the two styles, um, I've tried to omit those drill holes. So that's just a, a footnote to the, to the results coming up. Okay, just for reference, the um, results I'll, I'll be presenting are based on um, pretty extensive um, geochemical suite that uh, utilise both four acid digests and um, fusion methods and a few other methods to, to, to get that, achieve that um, 65 element suite. So we use spider plots to do the comparison and normalise values using the bulk continental crust defined by Rudnick and Gao and did this because of the diverse lithologies in the data set. So considering two times crustal abundance is significant, and marked there with a the red dashed line, uh, magnetite dominated systems are characterized by enormously high values in the uh, listed elements on the bottom right there. But in particular, in addition to copper gold, um, whole rock values around 10 times average values for selenium, uh, tellurium, thallium, and uranium. And also characteristic, is a, a very clear, steep, light rare earth enrichment trend. Now with the hematite group overlaid, um, firstly, the common elements um, to both hematite and, and magnetite group um, ICGs are highlighted and listed here. And um, what I've shown here are, are the mean values, but uh, most convincingly when looking at means and median values are enrichments in the elements copper, gold, sulfur, selenium, tin, tellurium, thallium, uranium and, and light rare earths again. So given these data include a range of host rocks and, and minor prospects and deposits, we'd argue that these elements are characteristic of ICG deposits more generally or at least in the um, copper gold, Olympic copper gold province. In addition to these common group of elements, hematite systems have um, additional elements enrichments, and I've highlighted those that are, are unique to uh, hematite occurrences, as indicated by um, this study. So in particular, um, silver, bismuth, antimony, and, and, and tungsten. While these elements could be viewed as the addition of external metal, metal sources, we can do further analysis that suggests it doesn't have to be the case. So by categorizing the data by copper concentration, we can um, look at the behavior relative to increasing copper mineralization. So with the blue line here representing background um, and slightly um, anomalous with respect to, to copper, um, and increasing towards red, which is more than 3,000 ppm, which is um, uh, which is uh, you know considered considered highly mineralized. So most elements become increasingly enriched with copper, as you um, would expect. Um, it also highlights that these deposits can host a significant quantity of a range of metals. 
But in one of the interesting outcomes of this work, when we look at sample results from magnetite dominated systems, the story is actually quite different. So while there are some significant enrichments, many elements actually get depleted with increasing copper values. So a number of the elements where the red represents the highly mineralized samples um, are actually below or depleted relative to background samples. But what is particularly interesting is that many of the elements getting depleted in magnetite dominated systems are those that, that appear to be unique or are highlighted as being unique to, to hematite systems. And these are now highlighted in red in the table. These involve a number of the chalcophile elements and a few minor elements. But what it indicates is that these elements are not precipitating with copper sulfides in, in magnetite dominated systems, potentially related to the high temperature of the system at the time. But as the system cools and becomes more oxidized, they precipitate in ore zones. And an implication of this is that these elements can be used for mapping or, or vectoring towards lower temperature and more oxidized parts of the system. And this plays out when we plot the data spatially. So referring back to the figure I showed at the start on the right and comparing it to antimony values. Um, so shown on the left is a perspective view of all the drill holes sampled in the project with each downhole sample colored by um, antimony. And it becomes clear that the same drill holes dominated by potassic rather than sodic alteration have high antimony values. And as alluded to earlier, represent the region dominated by hematite ISUG minimization. So the other question that we asked ourselves from the outset was whether large um, deposits are geochemically distinct from the smaller um, sub-economic occurrences in this data set, make up the bulk of the data set. But in the data set that we, we've analysed, we um, have some samples from Carapatina deposit and um, prominent hill deposit, both um, hematite dominated systems. Um, so this analysis was for hematite dominated systems. And we also incorporated um, extensive data minor and trace element data from um, Olympic Dam based on uh, published data from ERIC 2012. There's a, a lot of detail here, but basically we found a similar element association between the deposits and smaller hematite dominated occurrences. And I suppose not surprisingly that the deposits contain significantly higher values for many of the associated minor and trace elements than their sub-economic counterparts. But particularly gold, um, lignum, rhenium, tellurium, uranium and light rare earths. Um, but one of the key differences is that even in unmineralized samples, so those um, with less than 300 um, ppm copper, um, some element, elements, particularly light rare earth elements, are extremely enriched. So over 10 times bulk continental crustal values in light rare earths, you know, lanthanum and cerium, um, even in, in weakly mineralized samples. So in comparison, for, for regional samples and in, in other prospects analyzed, lanthanum and cerium values are typically less than five time crustal abundance in all but the most mineralized samples. So this was seen as a key difference that it, that um, common and, and extreme light rare earth enrichment. And so from an exploration point of view, it begs the question of where do we see values of 10 times um, continental crust, crustal values um, for these elements. So using cerium for the comparison, as opposed to the antimony plot, um, using a, the threshold of 10 times crustal um, abundance, it really is um, only the, the deposits that are visible at this scale. But um, there are a number of interesting intervals identified in, in other holes in the region that, that warrant um, follow up. So I'll just end with a, a couple of uh, conclusions from this work. So at least in the data set from the Olympic Copper Gold province, 
Elements exclusively enriched in hematite dominated occurrences can be used when exploring around magnetite dominated occurrences to help find the more hematite dominated parts of the system. Lastly, while economic deposits largely have the same element associations as sub economic occurrences, the big deposits show significant enrichment in associated elements, even in samples that aren't copper mineralized. So in particular, the light rare earth element in, um, values of more than 10 times crustal abundance appears to be a, a positive indicator that a, a significant system has developed. Okay, well, thank you for listening to my talk. And please contact me if you have any questions using the details on this slide. Cheers.